Yo, what's happening, man? Again with the goggles, man. I swear to God, all winter I'm gonna be doing this shit. Like, shit, subscribe, all that shit, right? So I wanna talk on something very personal to me. Y'all motherfuckers might be able to gather this, but I've done some drugs in my lifetime, man. I've done some drugs y'all ain't never even heard of. Some shit that's not even classified as drugs. This shit is extracted from like pine cleaner. The shit they make K2 out of. Not the leaves, the shit they spray on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. There's K2, and then there's K2. And then there's K2. This whole video gonna be about K2 type drugs. Yeah, you know them RCs. Fake acid, fake all that other shit. The shit that give you it, it, analog. It analogs the, the, the feeling of the drug. Or it... In some cases, like 1960s was probably the, one of the earliest uses of a RC. I think it was LSA. It was in the yellow sunshine tabs, which were acid. But it was almost like when the, the CIA bought all that acid. Yo, they bought the world. A lot of people don't know this. CIA bought the world supply. The world supply from Albert Brinkelhoff in Switzerland in of LSD. In the like 1949 or 1950 or some shit. Like during Eisenhower's presidency. CIA is formed. They used to be the OSS. They buy the world supply of acid. And then about 20 years later. Charlie Manson happens. Right. And during that time. Right before that time was when the yellow sunshine tabs came out. And the thing was. was like the, they were trying to find what they could do with it. Could you com completely make a Manchurian candidate? Like what could you do with it? And the LSA had, it was basically designed to analog LSD. However, it only analogued the warping of audio, audio perception. It did not do it, have any visual effects. Like, my, my brother Miles always told me, yo, if I ever found, like, pure LSA tabs, I would want to do them shits just to see what the fuck, how scary that is. Just, like, and do, like, mad micrograms of it. I said, why? He's like, because... He's like, bro, it was in the yellow sunshine. I'm like, so you just want to be, like, not knowing what anyone is saying to you? Because I'll tell you one thing, man. The deal, like I said, is about research chemicals. We're going to talk about two specifics that I have extensive experience with. I don't know the name of the the um specific RCs that are in this, although I believe one to be MEO PCP4 or MEO PCP3, uh, which analogs dust. Um, it's a more intense dust trip that lasts about, lasts about like one twelfth of the time. Like it lasts 15 to 30 minutes tops. It was like, if you had dust that made you like to the point you couldn't be around people, but then it, it, it only lasts about the same amount of time that it takes for weed to wear off on motherfuckers. You see what I'm saying? Like, so... The other one I'm going to talk about is Embo. I'm not specifically sure which number. Um, I was giving this in tab form. That's what I'll talk about first. Uh, we'll get to the second one in a second, uh, which is called Bizarro is the actual smoking mix. I'm not for sure what it contained because I did not have any specifically catastrophic adverse effects that would be able to make me be like, yeah, that seems like that. Um... Another one I'll touch on is called DOC. Um, I knew somebody who who did this shit. I did this shit and I had a weird experience, but it wasn't like this kid did this shit and saw himself drive a car up, his own car. He had like a, a yellow Beamer, I think at the time, and he hopped out his own car with a gun he did not own in real life. This is him walking up on himself in first person. Him like, not even in third person, as a, as a totally, it didn't happen. You see what I'm saying? But that's when the trip ended. He's like, for the first four hours, I felt nothing. I thought I got beat. And that was the same shit I had, the same experience I had when I saw it. It's like, you think you get beat, and then you have this crazy, like, it's it's a, it's a reality-based trip that you know couldn't happen. Like, for me, it was like, I think I wound up chilling with myself. Like, there was, it, it was weird because I remember between me and this kid, the same concept that was there was it involved ourself doing something with or to ourselves, and i didn't black out like eventually my my like me just walked off and like it was over 
But again, for like the first four hours, nothing happened. I had a whole conversation with this motherfucker who was me. Like literally, literally, like it was like talking to a mere image that has a mind of its own and it's not really there. And that part only lasts about 20 minutes at most. I think in my case, I think his case probably lasted less than five. But for the first four hours, you think you're beat. Uh, so let's get that out of the way real quick. On the next one is M-Bone. Right. My right ear is two-thirds crazy glue from the way down. Because of, of what I believe was m -bone. It's never been guaranteed. This shit's not even on a drug test. I don't even think like big urines test for a lot of these RCs. I know they test for some of them. Uh, and big urines, for those of y'all who've been in the halfway house, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's like when they send your shit out like probation do. You know, and it's not just a Delta 9 or a Delta 12 cup. It's like it covers shit you wouldn't even think was a drug. Shit, you can't... You know how, like, you look on a soda bottle, it's like... Maltosutrodextrinite. Like, some shit that you can't even... You gonna fuck kill your tongue trying to just say this shit. Yeah, shit like that. Like, I forget what the name of DOC really is. But some crazy shit like that. And it's always the point where, like... It almost does the same shit, but either the duration is different, the effect is more intense or less intense. Like, for example, there's one called Bromo Dragonfly. It's one of the only ones that's illegal in a specific state, Oklahoma. And it's supposed to analog LSD. But apparently what it does, and like, I had a buddy who, we thought we hit it, we thought we hit $40,000, that's all I'm gonna say. And it was this, this white stuff, and it wasn't nothing uppy. That shit, had, like, my boy thought it was some beat shit for a half hour. And then he ran the bathroom of the bando, and he never came out till, like, three, four days later. Like, we couldn't use the bathroom in this bitch. You understand? Like, this motherfucker was locked in there. And, like, if you knocked on the door, all he did was knock back. You know what I'm saying? Like, dead ass. Like, so this shit is it's supposed to end, but apparently it's slightly less intense. But it lasts, like, up to a week. And, like, motherfuckers have cut their limbs off trying to get this shit to stop. All type of shit. I think that's what... He, like, he even said, dude was even like, bro, I thought it was some shit where I permanently fucked my brain up on drugs. Like, I thought I was... You know what I'm saying? Because once I... Uh, like, he was like, it's B. I was like, oh, I ain't tell you that. Maybe in a little bit if he start feeling something. And then when I seen how he reacted, I said, I ain't even gonna fuck with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm all good. So, uh, yeah. So, getting back to the... Two affirmations. So, yeah, my right ear is crazy glue, I think, because of the M bone. Either that or, or just low tolerance or something, but I don't think. Because the way I seized up was crazy. Like, I've done acid a bunch of times. It was not like that. This shit had me seeing everything like it was a rainbow version of the coding of the Matrix. And then all my audio was gone. While I was seizing, I apparently seized up into my room, locked the deadbolt on the slider, seized into my bathroom, turned the shower all the way hot. Got out the shower, turned the shower off, and was seizing on my bed for like a good few minutes. And then my mom, who was an ER nurse, came in. She was like, and she called 911. You see what I'm saying? So, like, that's some shit. I woke up, and the, the EMTs and police is like walking around, with, like, police is looking at scale, but like, they can't do nothing about it because they're there for a medical call. So, it's like, yeah, no, nah, that, that was kind of like what made me hot at my parents' house. But, so yeah, so then the last one I'm going to talk about. It's probably the, the most interesting to me because, like, some of these research chemicals, like, it won't even, this is shit you can't even Google. Like, you have to see this shit for yourself because on Google, whatever, I don't think there's a single, like, because there's lists of this shit, of analogs of, of drugs and shit, right? A lot of them found in nature, like, the shit that's on the Colorado River toe that gets you high, that's a naturally occurring analog of DMT. It is not DMT. It is MEO DMT3 or some shit. A lot of the naturally occurring ones... I don't even know if it's just naturally occurring ones, but like I said, MEO, PCP, MEO in front of a lot of shit is an analog. Um, so this shit, whatever it was, the mix was called Bizarro. It has Superman logo on the bag. And my boy gives it to me. He goes, yo, I'm going to give you something. Whatever you get back, give it just whatever. You, I don't want a specific. He said, if you give me $5 for this shit down the line, I don't care. I just want to get rid of it. I'm like, why? Like, what's what's the deal with this? He's just going to give me. And it was like, bro, it wasn't one packet. It was like a box of packets. And like, I never wound up moving none of it. Because he's like, bro, you just got to smoke it when you're alone. 
and and no one else is awake. I'm like that's that's weird. And so like me and my boy go home and we smoke the shit like together. There's no one around us who's not smoking the shit. So it's just me, him, and my wife. And we go back to my parents' house, we're smoking the shit, and I, we're like, yo, what the fuck was this kid on, bro? Like, what was he talking about? Like, it's just, it's just like weed, bro. We was just laughing and shit. And, bro, like, I smoked this shit by myself the next day, like, around my pops. Like, and he thought, at first, I knew he'd think I was smoking weed, bro, because I was using a bong and everything. I'm a medical car, so he didn't really care about that, obviously. And, bro, I started standing up and sitting down in a couch repeatedly for, like, must have been like five, ten minutes. And he notices that I'm doing it and comes to the door like, what the fuck are you doing? And the moment he opened that door, I took off and I ran down the street to the golf course. I just ran, just took off, like, through the country club. That's why they kicked me out of there. Like, yo, this motherfucker got this shit looking like Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, and like, not the good part. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, like, this shit... It always, especially if you was around somebody who wasn't on it when you smoked it, you would be so fucking uncomfortable, you'd have to leave their presence. Like, um, the only other shit that I had happened on it was probably weirder than that. And the weirdest part is still yet to come. Uh, so then I smoked it another time by myself, yo. And I hallucinated an entire phone call. Like, heard my phone ring, everything was on the phone with my boy who was locked up, who I kind of done dirty on some shit. He's talking about sending Chinese gangsters to my house. He's not even partially Chinese. Keep in mind, that just shows you the mindset this shit had me in. After, like, 15 minutes of, like, locking doors and, like, getting, like, armaments together and shit, all of a sudden, I, like, my mom's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing running around the house with all that? You, you got the, you got... And you got a blowtorch and you got the dog. And, I, you know, I left the blank there for a reason. And I said, uh, <laughs> I was like, yo, I swear to God, Lenny sending Chinese gangsters to the house. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, here, I'll go get my phone. I go get my phone. It hasn't even rung. The last call is from the day before. Like, I hallucinated this whole shit. Like, believe that. Like, I was talking back to dude and everything. But that's not even the weirdest part about this Bizarro shit. Keep in mind, it's called Bizarro. And from what I can tell, it analogs dust. It, I, but definitely in a weird-ass fucking way. Like, my boy said everyone looked like Gollum. He still won't smoke it to this day. Like, I'm the only... They gave it to me because to this day, I'm the only motherfucker who smoked that shit in, that, in, in, in the whole town we was in. And most people... This is the weirdest part. Most people, when they smoked it, called the police on themselves. I'm not even fucking joking. Like, I knew at least five other kids besides my brothers who had smoked this shit. Keep in mind, one of them brothers almost called the cops on himself. And then, like, his older brother was like, nah, you bugging. It'll, it'll wear off. And sure enough, it did. That's the one who said everything looked like Gollum. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From Lord of the Rings. That's exactly how he says it, too. But, yeah, like, four other people, including my wife's ex-boyfriend... My boy Brian, God rest his soul, uh, he died a few years after this. Bunch of people was all calling the cops on themselves from smoking this shit. I can't even make this shit up. I, and that's why they gave the, they, they was just like, here, take this. Get rid We don't want this even around here. All right, man, be easy. Like I said, I don't tell nobody to do or not to do drugs, man. Just be true to yourself, true to God, true to who you is as a person and everybody else, man. Be easy.